Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we're heading back to our quarterly subscription box from Artful and we are going to tackle one of the tutorials in the magazines. I want to thank you for your responses to that request. Clearly, clearly you cavers are not fussy because most of you said, yeah, we'd like to see you do a tutorial. I was hoping for a little bit more guidance than that, but it's okay. The one that did prove most popular was the sunset over water. So that's what we're going to try today. Just before we do that, I wanted to show you the upgrade box. Now, this is the first upgrade box that I've bought from Artful. Uh, pastels is something that's a bit more my kind of in my kind of wheelhouse, and I thought this would be worthwhile. So I just wanted to show you what the box looks like. And when I opened it up, it was nice and tightly packed in. Again, pastel sticks can be quite delicate, so they've done a good job of keeping them nice and secure. And these are the two boxes of pastels. I have rearranged the colours uh, to suit myself and I'll show you why in a minute and I've taken a photograph for you so that you can see the colour sets in the original boxes so I'll pop that up on the screen now but they come in the same kind of packaging that the original set came in and they've got this lovely cardboard inset which keeps everything nice and snug and all of the pastels that arrived in my upgrade box were entire I had no breakages at all I did swatch them all out so you could see so that is the full colour range apart from these three at the bottom 48 pastels, so the original set of 24 that we got plus the 24 from the upgrade box. The good thing that I found particularly about the uh, the, the red-yellow box was that it's given us a lot more earth tones because most of those are quite bright and for someone who likes to draw things from nature I prefer more earthy tones than the really vibrant ones but we've got a nice balance now. So as you can see, to suit my orderly self, I have rearranged the sticks so that when you put them all side by side, they are in their colour groups and that just uh, it helps my, my tiny little mind a bit more than, than the way that they were. <laughs> so if I do that, you can see that makes sense now because you're running white through yellow, red, pink, purple, blue, into green and then into the earth tones and then finally into the neutral shades at the bottom. That works really well for me and that's the way I'm going to keep it. <laughs> So one of the advantages of doing this particular tutorial, and here is the start of it here, this is done on toned paper. I had started to mess about and I've played about a little bit with these pastels on the mixed media pad that came in the Artful box and quite truthfully I'm not impressed with it. I've tried it with watercolour and ink and as a mixed media pad it's really good but it's just, it's just not great for pastel. So in doing this we're actually kind of helping ourselves out a little bit here and this is one of the things I really like about these magazines there are basic tutorials using the supplies in the box but for those of us who have had experience with pastels before there's things that are a little bit more complex and include other supplies like toned paper so even if you're not a total beginner you're still going to get something out of this magazine if you want to follow the tutorials and I think that's lovely I really do so uh, this paper was gifted to me by a lady called Joanne some time ago I think it's Canson pastel paper I can't quite remember I was a long time ago but you can see there that matches the colour of the paper that's been used in the tutorial quite closely so I've also opted for the slightly less textured side as well because there seems to be a lot of blending in this tutorial so I thought we'd help ourselves along a little bit by using a slightly smoother surface. I do have a little uh, sanding block here and this is just to wipe off the excess pastel on the blending stumps should we wish to use them. I've talked about these quite a lot in videos just this last week or so, so you'll all be up to speed with that. I've also got a rag here and it's wet and that is to wipe my fingers on because I do like to use my fingers to blend. So if you've got that sat beside you, you can just give your finger a rub and then you're nice and clean and you're ready to go again and you're not going to run out of digits. So step number one, we have our paper. Loosely trace or draw the elements of this scene onto your paper. Now we don't have to follow this to the letter, but we want to try and replicate this as best we can because that's kind of the point of a tutorial. The horizon line is roughly, I would say it's a quarter of the way up the page, maybe even, maybe even coming up to a third of the way up the page. And we've got the shoreline that runs off at an angle. And if I just show you here, so here's our horizon line and then this, we've got this, you know, you can see it runs off to a tangent here. So we'll pop that in as well. And then we've got some rather interesting rock formations here. And these kind of poke in over this horizon line. 
So obviously the, the sort of focal point of this picture is more the sky and you can see that the detail in the foreground, oh it left a mark, oh no, that's pastel dust from earlier. You can see that the detail has been sort of squished down into the bottom half of the of the picture and that lets the sky take take sort of center stage. But it's important to have details like this because that's what adds interest. If you were just to do the sky, it would be quite impactful, but it's nice to have that contrast of something darker in front of it. And then there's a little line of what looks like hills or and that's finishing roughly just past the middle of the of the page. So that'll be about right. Okay, so then we need to think about these cloud formations. So when I'm looking at the tutorial here, they're almost a beveled shape. So they're like a semicircle in this sort of second third. They all sort of come to a focal point in the middle here. You know, everything kind of leads into that and that's to draw the eye into the centre of the picture. So we don't have to follow that exactly, but we want to get that kind of idea. So I think I'm going to start just by drawing a couple of like smiley faces. <laughs> You know, just to give me an idea of the lines of where my clouds should be going. And they're really light and you're not going to see them by the time I'm finished because they're going to be covered in pastel. So I'm just going to start drawing some in now. And these are these are quite sort of loose, loose shapes. So yes, yeah, some of the some of these lines are, are a little more than um, than just that, than lines. And what I find interesting as well, he's also put some lines in the water and they're kind of going to that center point that I was talking about, like that focal point. These lines are heading this way so we'll put that in and there's something that I've found in the few times that I have that I've worked with pastel it's not been very many uh, I actually find that a lot of the time I don't use an under sketch I prefer just to go in with the pastel and make the shapes with the color if that makes sense so this is quite good for me as well because I'm not very experienced with pastel at all I like it I don't like the messiness but I was planning on doing another video with these pastels and doing a bit of a comparison to the pan pastels which is the pastel that I like to use so if that's something you would like to see please let me know in the comments because if enough people want to see it I'll do that as a separate video okay I think we're good with the sketch so I'm going to put my my little artful pencil back down <laughs> so step two follow the shapes of the clouds towards the central area of the painting so that was the focal point I was talking about in the middle very lightly stroke the flat side of a pastel across the sky block in the clouds shadows with the flat side of a pastel so he's using mostly a light blue and a darker blue here. But if we look up to this section here, that it doesn't cover the whole sky. It's only about two thirds of the sky. So it's really this top section. So we're just gonna do this. We are literally doing this a tiny little step at a time. So we have to decide which blues we want. So if I just come over here, look how pretty these all look together. <laughs> So I'm thinking to myself here, so we could pick one of these two and for the lighter blue, we're kind of heading into greens a little bit too much here, but I think this one would probably be the closest. And on the camera, this looks really blue, but it's actually got a little bit of green in it. That's a color balance for you. So we're talking about using the side of the pastel here. I don't even know where to start with this because if I use the side of the pastel, I should really have put a, a, a chisel shape into this because say I've got the full length of the pastel. So there's only one way to remedy that. <laughs> Very lightly stroke the flat side of the pastel across the sky. Okay, so we're, this is light pressure. You know, I talk about um, I talk about pencil pressure a lot. So that's kind of what we're thinking about here. So I'm just following in some of my shapes here. Now this looks very light. See the amount of pastel that's actually laying down on the paper? This looks very light compared to this here. If you look here compared to what I've got, so we might actually have to be a bit heavier handed. So, but this is one of these things because we're, we're obviously using different types of pastels as well. We're using the artful pastels. Um, so we this may be just a bit of adjustment and we'll find out how we go. So I'm going to grab my lighter one now and I'm going to do the same thing. And there seems to be quite a lot of the paler blue in the middle, so I'm picking out those larger shapes that I did. And again, when I was talking about kind of sticking it to this area, right? I feel as if I've not got enough of the darker blue now. Moving on to the next step. This is this is a lot. Create a light glow of colour just above the horizon. The in, this indicates the exact point where the sun sets behind the distant island. So this is this little low section we were talking about earlier. Highlight the vibrant glow of the sunset by adding in reds and orange oranges radiating from the lightest yellow. So 
In terms of our yellow selection, there's this pale yellow, this one here. So we'll see how that shows up on this paper. I would imagine it stands out quite well. And if we're gonna put that reflection in, we could go to the slightly deeper yellow. He has got this exactly over the top of that little bump in the background. And he's got it sort of fading out towards this edge. Okay, so I've picked out an orange and a red as well. I'm kind of spoilt for choice with that. Uh, some of the reds are more pinky and I've opted to go you know, more into yellow than, than pink. So I'm going to start building up some, some other colour here. Obviously when we blend yellow and red together, that's going to give us orange anyway. So we, we don't need to be too excitable with our orange but we'll pick out the places where the yellow isn't there and we can put some of that orange down there. And now we can go in with our red. Just sort of fill in the gaps a little bit. I feel like I want a little bit more yellow in. I don't feel like there's enough. I might actually use a deeper yellow. I'll see how we go when we get to the, the kind of the blinding out stage. But so far, so good. Okay. Uh, develop the silhouettes of the two rocks. Create a strong, a strong shadow of the rocks in the water. Highlight the distant island position just above the horizon with the ch chisel edge of a blue pastel. Okay, I've got that filled in pretty well. And then he's drawn in this horizon line again. I'll just show you in the, in the actual book. He's put in the horizon line with a dark brown and that's kind of like blended into the shadow from the rocks. Like it's the same pastel. And then he's used different colours for the actual rocks themselves. Now, it would have been nice if they'd uh, told us what colours he's used. It looks like a really dark brown and like a, a navy blue, like this kind of blue, for, for these bigger rocks. So in terms of, we're kind of lacking in a really dark, deep chocolate brown. Uh, that's something that's, uh, you know, that this is as good as we've got here. But with a bit of blending, I think we'll get on okay. Just put these outlines in first. And then we can, so we can bring this horizon line across. And we'll say, well, maybe deep, deepen this up a little bit. Reluctant to use black, I might try and put a little bit of dark grey in. And then he's used like um, this, this really dark blue in here. Yeah, this is not dark enough. This needs to be much darker. Okay, I'm trying with the grey and it's not, it's just not so black it is. Oh, regrets. To create the impression of rocks on the beach with a flat side of a darker pastel, lightly run the flat side of three colours of pastel over the sea to create areas of reflection from the sky. Right, we know how to do that. Gem Gem can do that. <laughs> There's going to be a wee reflection here. And then we bring this all the way out. And that's coming right down almost to the, the water line here. Down here. And then we'll grab our grab our yellow. And again, just thinking about where we've put them up here, it's, it is going to be a mirror image, but obviously it's going to be a much looser shape because the water is going to distort that. So maybe just add a few more bits of yellow in there just for a giggle. And maybe a little bit of orange too. Again, not being terribly careful here. This is, this is why I really enjoy this because you basically just make splodges on the paper. And if you do a bit of squishing about, everything, everything turns out lovely. <laughs> Like, why would you not want to do that? He's not filled in all the, um, all the, I was going to say the white of the paper, you know what I mean. So I'll leave, I'll leave some gaps there. Okay, so the flat side of a darker pastel, again, this, this brown's probably, probably the best bet here, actually. I'm trying to keep an eye on my pencil lines, they're kind of starting to disappear in amongst all these colours now. Well, if that isn't an underpainting, I don't know what is. <laughs> so that's us, we're at this stage now. Mm, well, <laughs> we're sort of at this stage now. Let's see what happens when we go over the... Oh my God. <laughs> it's like the last part's lots of work and it's only in two steps. So step six says, lightly, uh, gently rub the pastel into the surface to fix the colours onto the background and create the underpainting. Highlight the rocks on a beach with a fine layer of blue, creating waves. Okay, so we've got to basically blend everything now. Uh, this is the messy part. Um, so I'm just going to give my fingers a wipe because they do have pastel all over them already. Oh, it's just the way of it. Uh, see, this is the downside. This is the part I don't like. So I'm going to make sure my fingers are dry before I start sticking them in, in the painting. Because that would be helpful. Okay, I don't know where to start. <laughs> so I don't know how, how well this is going to go, actually. Uh, see, right, that... Uh... 
This seems really wishy-washy to me and as if there's like far too much of the of the paper showing through like the color of the paper so i am struggling with blending this out and i don't know whether it's to do with my mark making with the actual pastel you know whether it was to do with my pressure there or whether it's my pressure when i'm blending this out but there's a lot of my marks still really visible. So I'm not entirely sure about that, but I'm just working my way around the colors here. Doing the lighter blue now. I seem to be getting on better with the lighter blue, which is really strange. That was a wee bit too hard there. I could feel that when I was doing that with my finger. I do struggle a little bit with pressure with my with my hand sometimes. Um, I have full motor function, but I don't have any pressure sensitivity or feeling in the tips of three of my fingers. So when it comes to doing stuff like this, it can get quite interesting. I have learned to sort of gauge it over time just by the pressure that's coming from my elbow and my shoulder. Um, but especially when you're working with a thing like pastel and strange paper, it doesn't always go according to plan, but do you know what? That's absolutely fine. I have to say though, like even at, see if this doesn't turn out, I'm having loads of fun, uh, apart from my really dry finger. <laughs> See, I've got an awful lot of bald patches of the paper and I know we're going to be going back over this with, with pastel again, so I'm not too concerned at this stage. But, I see, I'm starting to get a contaminated finger. I've got quite a lot of blue on there and that's just going to make everything muddy. So, now, see, the thing about this tutorial, it would be nice if they talked about, uh, you know, blending techniques with your fingers. Are you supposed to go in a circular motion? Are you supposed to go in the direction of your pastel strokes? Like, I, I, I'm not really sure. Because you want to keep that directional sweep you know, like this. But we want it blended out enough that it is actually blended out, if that makes sense. I've noticed that the reds and oranges are blending much, much more easily than the blues. So that kind of follows my theory about coloured pencils as well, because generally we find that the yellow and the orange pigments are much softer by nature than the blues, and it's just to do with the recipe that they use to make up the colours. So it's quite interesting that the same thing's happening with pastel as well. I may have to rework some of this, and again, that's the beauty of pastel. And the yellow's blending out beautifully and it's very delicate, it's lovely. Again, I could maybe have a little bit more yellow in here. I want to do this with a blending stump just because it's a, it's a much smaller area and just I need to get some precision here. And the same with the edges of these rocks. I think I'm going to use a blending stump just because it gives me much more precision and I can actually bring that orange down a bit further you know so it actually meets the top of the rock because right now it's not but because of the colour of the paper we're using it's not that obvious so I could probably get away without it. I'm really enjoying the edge of that actually that's a, that's a nice edge. Okay that looks all right actually I'm not very happy with this part but I'm happy with the uh, this sort of background colour from a rock I'm not going to complain about that. Again I'm kind of fallen short here I've not gone far enough out to the side of the paper. Now in the finished painting, the water is quite still, so I'm going to use this left to right motion here. So there, I mean, there's still a, like a little bit of movement in the water, but it's not going to look choppy because if we start going in all different directions, that's obviously going to affect that. And then we've got the browns here. So again, this horizon line, um, I'm actually going to leave a little bit of black from, from what I was doing over here on this blending stump. And then we've got these uh, these rocks down here. Are we to blend it? Yeah, we have to blend all this out as well. Again, I want to try and keep the texture of some of this. So I'm going to go in more of like a circular motion here. And I feel like the colour of the paper works in our favour for this section as well. I should feel as if I should have this stuck down. So because I'm having to pin the paper at the corner here. And that's probably not how you're supposed to do things either. Because you're going to end up with greasy fingerprints there. Okay, right. So I'm pretty, um, I'm all, I think I'm all blended out for the time being. Maybe apart from here. So that is technically our underpainting. If you take a look at this and this but we go from this to this in one step like holy moses Whoa, wait a minute here when did that happen so this is a light blue so i think i'll use the light blue for the sake of uniformity that I was using before so we created this yeah i wish there was more direction on what we should be doing with our strokes like the actual mark making because a lot of pastel is to do with how you actually lay those strokes down. And he has, he's just put some random marks in here. Okay, so they've smashed everything into one step here when they're talking about the sky. Gently create small clouds that indicate movement across the sky using a pale blue or white. 
add pink and other light layers to the sky. Lightly cover the clouds with yellow to add vibrancy to the sky. That's a lot in one step, considering where we started from. So basically, they're, what they're telling us to do is finish our sky and cover in all the gaps, um, which I'm not, not all that pleased about, to be perfectly honest. And again, no indication of what kind of movements we should be using, you know, what kind of marks we should be making. So yeah, let's just wing it. Why not? That's what we do anyway. So I'm kind of aiming for those areas where I can still see some of the paper. That's a good place to start as any, I'm sure you'll agree. Maybe join this up. And I'm just using white for this because again, white seems to... Well, it's blending with the blue, so it's actually giving us a really, really pale blue. Now pink. Oh my. Right, let's take this pink. Why not? This is going to need more layers of yellow and orange built up as well. Definitely. Okay, I think this needs a lot more layering. I'm not convinced about this at all. I, I think it looks very unfinished and very amateurish. So I'm going to start over in this corner and I'm going to put another layer of pastel down in the varying colours that I've been using and really start to fill in these gaps and build up some some decent colour and I feel this red isn't going down at all now unless I press really hard which is kind of strange but even if I see if I just focus on this corner and get some more white in these clouds as well they're very blue I just don't feel the coverage is very good I'm starting to get there now with the with the pastels because this is well this is like four layers in this top right hand corner so I don't know whether it's the paper or whether I'm doing something wrong but I, I've got nothing to guide me from the the tutorial at this point, I feel as if I'm kind of out on my own here, uh, which which is okay. I mean, that's fine. You know, if it's a total disaster, nobody's going to die if this turns out to be a horrible painting. But uh, <laughs> you would like to think that you've got a degree of safety in your, you know, in your, your tutorial, which I just don't feel that I've got right now. I feel as if I'm kind of out on a limb, but that's fine. That's okay. Uh, I'm going to work away on this. This is going to take me forever <laughs> and I'm just going to work on the sky. We've not talked much about what's going on in the sea, but I would imagine it's quite similar to what's going on up here. You know, it's like, it's kind of the same idea. So down here as well, I feel as if my yellow's just disappearing. So I'm just grabbing a slightly brighter yellow and I'm going to add some of that in here. Okay, it's taken me 45 minutes to get to this point. I actually think I could work this more, but there is a danger of overworking your pastels and that's the stage that you don't want to get to and I feel like I'm teetering on the brink here especially with these delicate little white clouds I don't want to obliterate them and I've actually started to over mix here and you can see I've got a green hue here and really I'm I'm just going by reference now from this bottom picture so this is the last image in the tutorial as far as the tutorial is concerned I've finished this first paragraph about adding vibrancy to the sky I don't I'm frightened to do anything else to it now and it's not turned out exactly the way I would have liked. Short horizontal lines indicate waves, small waves in the water. Highlight the waves at the edge of the shore with, and then with a black pastel pencil outline the rocks on the beach to convey a rocky shoreline. Again, well, that last step, wow. Like that, he's all, he's, from here to here, he's added more dark blue. He's filled in the sea completely, which is not what the picture before looked like. So we've got, again, we've got a lot of work to do and this tutorial is very, very deceiving because you think you're, you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get, get something out of this and you know, just a couple of steps, you're not. Uh, so he's used a lighter blue over the top of the, this sort of island in the background so I'm just going to add that in. So what I've learned so far is we need much much more pastel than we've been using Um, as I say that could be a combination of factors because the the artist that has done this tutorial is not using the artful pastels as far as I'm aware because this tutorial has come from a book and he's not using the same paper so I'm like multiple layers here and I am using slightly different shades every time I do this just to give it a bit more of an organic feel because I don't want this to feel like really blocky. His rocks are super dark, like they're super, super dark and he has used black charcoal. So for this horizon, I'm basically just going to work my way down now. Um, so just doing the rocks in the horizon, I'm going to use the black charcoal pencil from the original box. You can see my grey's taking a bit of a beat and my grey has not survived well, but the rest of these pencils are hoping okay so this is obviously giving us a lot more precision so this line gets thicker and thicker and thicker and then he's got this really defined line I don't I think that really really sticks out I don't think that that looks good but if we darken down our hills here then that's going to tie in with that horizon line a lot better 
Again, there's no real description about what to do with this. It's just like, oh, well, you know, if you blend that out, that's what it's going to look like. Well, no, it's not. Big difference between that and that, and I haven't done anything with it yet. So just remember, guys, I'm not saying that this is a bad tutorial. What I'm saying is if you are a beginner, you may be lulled into a false sense of security because to me, this isn't a tutorial for beginners. It's really not. Now, I don't know whether they've amended the tutorial to fit in the magazine as well. It could have been edited down. Um, there's a high chance of that. But thankfully, as I say, I've, I've you know, I've, I've worked with pastels before, so I'm able to build on what's there. Not everyone is going to be in that position. I'm much happier with that and I quite like the texture and the way that the colour underneath has come through. So um, I'm going to gonna stick with that. And I maybe not use quite as much black in this one. Technically it should be blacker because it's further away from the light source. But because it's a silhouette it's not quite as important. Do you know I've been sitting here so long that I actually really need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> You did not need to know that, but that's how long I've been sitting here. Yeah, it's, it's a good couple hours now. Woo, okay. So I feel as if I've uh, I've kind of gotten to where I wanted to get to with the rocks, and I think they look quite good. And the advantages of using that brown is the outline. It looks as if a tiny bit of light is catching that outside edge, and that isn't in the tutorial. So I'm actually really happy with that. I'm saying that a bit tongue-in-cheek. Like, I, I'm not going against the tutorial, but... Did a, and I'm not that experienced with pastels. So take from that what you will. And you know that I'm not a person that blows my own trumpet. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this bottom part now. This needs to be much, much more solid. I'm going to bring in some more browns because they didn't talk about that at all either. So that I've got the original brown that I used. And I'm going to start to do what I did with the sky and just make this a lot richer. Have not so much of the paper showing through underneath. This was a fabulous choice. That's one thing I will say. This was a fabulous choice for the the paper colour. So I'm just going to stick in. This is like an ochre colour, which I would like very much. Big, big fan of the ochres. This is still going to be dark because it's in shadow. So we're still going to have to match it to this. Now I need to do something about this water line around this shore here not really sure what to do so just gonna blend in what's there because i didn't do anything with that if you remember and then i might even pop they were talking about using white see this is dark like there's there's hints of really dark blue and black in this shadow and yeah okay so kind of what i did up with the sky when i was fixing the sky i did introduce a darker blue like an indigo blue and that's what you can see here here and a wee bit here as well and i think that's what we're gonna have to do down here too because this looks non-existent right let's get a few more let's really work this shadow area i should really do this last because it's right under where my hand sits but if i need to turn the the painting upside down i'll do it it's not not really a problem for me i do think i was maybe a wee bit stingy with the initial lay down though and that's operator error that's my fault that's not anything to do with the tutorial yeah okay okay so this next part i'm basically going to do the same with the water that i did with the sky and there seems to be a lot more yellow here as well so i'll get cracking with that but i may be sometime I may be some time. Mr. Gem's just been in for a bit of a conflab. So all I've done there is I've added in some pink into this water area. And just as I did up there, as I said earlier, I'm just trying to sort of make this match almost. So as it stands, this looks like a mirror. It doesn't look like water. It's like sheet glass. But we, we will rectify that as we go along. I don't know why that made me laugh either. That's not even that funny, but it just, it just, uh, just made me, tickled me somehow. More of these thicker areas at the shoreline because that's obviously where the waves are breaking. Small as they are, they're still there. Quite fascinated by doing stuff like this because I was born and lived in a seaside town for many, many, many years. And my my grandmother, who most of you know a little bit about, you literally rolled out the door of her house and you were on the beach. So we used to spend a lot of time on the shore there as well as youngsters <laughs> getting into all sorts of mischief. So I'm quite ta quite taken with the water. I don't miss it because my my, uh, my dad actually asked me that once and he said, he says, do you not miss being by the water? And weirdly, I don't. I still like it to visit, but I don't feel this yearning that I'm kind of missing out on something, which is interesting. But then again, I really like trees and I'm surrounded by trees here. So, you know, <laughs> Gem Gem does love a good tree. <laughs> I just wanted to create a little bit more movement around this water's edge as if the waves are, you know, they're actually lapping. To me, this maybe looks as if it's on the, the shore of a lake rather than the sea. 
Okay, so that leaves us the beach and we're to do this with the black charcoal pencil. I think there's a bit of grey in here as well because there seems to be an awful lot of variation in colour in these stones compared to the one line of, uh, of pastel that we used. So yeah, I think there's been a bit of uh, creative editing going on here. So we're going to rectify that though, it's not a big deal. But this is where your powers of observation as an artist this is where it comes in really handy because you can pick these details out for yourself. You know, we're not stupid. We might be beginners, but we're not stupid. Um, and we can add these things in as we see fit. And it depends how brave you're feeling as well. Maybe if you're an absolute novice, you might not feel that brave. But that's what I'm here for. So you can just um, follow on with what I'm doing. So I'm just dotting in some of this brown again that we'd used up here. So we're reusing the same colours. We're keeping that sort of cohesiveness as much as possible because there is quite a lot going on here so we don't want to be continually introducing all these new colours and uh, I'm going to take this grey, this is the darker grey that we've got right there we go, we've popped a bit of that in which is fine as well I might take my, my little blending stump here again, I'll just give it a wee clean off and just soften this out, I'm not really wanting to blend it out I'm just wanting to take away some of you know the initial marks made to give us that variance in texture because obviously stones are especially on a beach you know they're very very textured so we need as much variation as possible without it looking too busy and i don't think i want to go into as much detail as our as our faithful tutorial man here i think it's a bit much to be honest and plus i've been sitting here for freaking hours transitioned from morning into lunchtime and the smell of mr james soup is driving me nuts because my tummy is hungry these sections where i've put the highlight down as was directed in the tutorial i'm making a point to outline those i just don't want it to be too busy to be honest i'm going to stop here yeah that's taken me two and a half hours three three hours so here is the finished tutorial picture in all its glory and here is my finished article i have to say i'm quite pleased with it once I got over that shock of, okay, this is going to be a lot more work than I thought it was, I'm actually quite pleased with this. I like the way it's turned out. I think the, the colour choice for the paper versus the subject matter is absolutely spot on. And I think I'm pretty safe in my assumption that the original beginner's tutorial has been chopped down to fit in the magazine. My rocks have turned out way better than the ones in the tutorial. And I'm actually quite happy with my shore here as well. I think my water's still a bit glassy. I think I blended out these colours a bit too much. But overall, pretty happy with it. Love to hear your thoughts on this. I would also love to know that now that you've seen me do this, whether you're going to try this sunset tutorial for yourself. It's incredibly good fun. I mean, I've had a great time. So I hope this has been useful for you. I say, please let me know if you want to see like a pan pastel comparison, if that's something that you're interested in, get down in the comments. All that's left to say is thank you very much for watching. Please stay safe, take care of each other, stick a like on the video. And I will see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. Have a great day, everyone. Bye for now.